I worked with one church for a summer camp. On the second day, we were interrupted by the authorities. They raided the camp and stopped all our activities. And they asked all the participants to present their ID cards and they recorded all their ID numbers. The pastor came forward and tried to talk to the authorities. They eventually got by by claiming that this is a casual gathering, a holiday for a group of young people who met each other and got to know each other on the internet. So eventually the officers left the campsite and we managed to gather all the young people to talk about what happened. Some of the young people were rather scared. They were afraid. Some burst into tears. And we took some time to comfort these young people. And some of them were rather confused. Why would the authorities do such a thing to us? And some even got rather angry. We put aside all our program for the whole evening and we kept on sharing until 3 a.m. And it was a rather beautiful experience. It was even more educational than a training class talking about persecution, because this is a real-life event, and they took the time to reflect upon the whole incident. The church leaders uh, could be get into trouble. And the church leaders could get into trouble and be fined or have their properties confiscated if they are found to have organized church activities for young people. At the same time, some churches still continue youth meetings, but they have to organize them in a variety of ways, such as choosing different days of the week having various locations, different locations such as coffee shops, parks, or even homes of the believers. And the meetings are getting smaller and smaller so that they can be more mobile and can stay invisible to the authorities. They will be persuaded by the teachers to they will be persuaded by the teachers to fill in non-religious whenever they are asked about their religion. They are persuaded not to write down Christianity. And for those who insist on putting down Christianity in their registration, they may be persuaded by the teachers again and again, or even threatened that they may not be able to get a good grade, or they may not be able to get a graduation certificate, even if they complete the course normally. I would not pray that the persecution... I would not pray that the persecution would be removed. But I would pray that all these young people can rise to be a better, stronger and more faithful Christian when they have gone through this persecution. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you found it helpful. Did you know that Open Doors Canada has a petition for Nigerian captives? You can learn more and sign the petition at opendoorscanada.org forward slash petition. Thanks for using your voice to make a difference. Be sure to subscribe and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks.